But I mentioned it before, but I, I'd like to review again something I think it fits this topic so perfectly. And that's certain constants of the universe. And it turns out that of all those constants we talked about, there are two constants that are dimensionless. And uh, one of them is pi. We've all dealt with that in school. It's the re relationship between the diameter and the circumference of a circle. And uh, it's a strange number. We'll come back to that in a minute. The other one you may not have run into unless you've been in a very advanced math, and that's the thing called E, the base of what they call natural logarithms. And uh, there are two key verses in the Bible about creation. The Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, of course, and the equivalent in the New Testament, John 1.1. 1, 1. They both announce the creation. It's interesting if we examine those two verses very, very carefully. First verse, Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. If we look at that in Hebrew, remember it goes from right to left, every letter, both Hebrew and Greek, have the peculiar characteristic that every letter has a numerical value. And you can take advantage of that in a number of interesting ways. In this case, if you take the number of letters in Genesis 1.1 1, 1, and multiply that by the product of the letters, and you do the same thing, you divide it by the number of words and the product of the words. See, every letter and every word has a numerical value. If you go through and apply those and, and uh, take that quotient, you come up with 3.1416, which happens to be the value of pi more accurately than you probably used in school. You probably, when you were in school, used 22 sevenths. If you're in engineering class, you might have used 3.14159, but it actually goes much longer than that. Here to four decimal place accuracy. Now, the average person will say, wow, uh, that's just a coincidence. Maybe. I think it's a very unlikely coincidence, by the way. But let's go on here a little bit. That happens to be pi times 10 to 17. Let's, there's a guy by the name of John Napier that you probably haven't run into, unless you were in advanced math. He was the discoverer of what we call logarithms. And natural or Napierian logarithms are named after him. That's when their uh, the logarithm is to the base of E. It has some very peculiar characteristics when that happens. He also was the guy that promoted the use of decimal point in fractions. He happened to be an activist for the Reformation and Protestant affairs in Scotland, by the way. And it's interesting in those early years, how whether it's Isaac Newton or whoever, these great scientists were also great churchmen, by the way. Or I should say, they at least took the Bible seriously. Well, E is a number you may not have run into, but it's very widely used in mathematics. It's, it's defined by an expansion, which I won't go into here. Its limiting value is about 2.718281828, and so on. The number E forms the base of natural or Napierian logarithms. Okay. What makes it so interesting? It appears in exponential function, E to the X. It's the only function having a rate of growth equal to its own size. In the language of calculus, it's the only function having a derivative equal to itself. It's therefore, it's the fundamental function for equations describing growth or many other processes of change. For that reason, you find it in wave mechanics, in electrical theory, in advanced math, distribution of prime numbers, who knows why, <laughs> defined by E, the limit, and so forth. It's usually approximated by 2.7, 1828, 1828, and so on. Okay. What am I getting at? Let's take the other verse. We saw Genesis 1.1 1, 1 led to pi. Let's take John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. If you take that into Greek, again, Greek has a numerical value for each letter. Do exactly what we did with Genesis 1.1. 1, 1, the number of letters times the product of letters divided by the number of words times the product of the words. You get E to four decimal places. That's astonishing. That's astonishing. I'll say, what a coincidence. My, fr my rabbinical friends will tell me, coincidence is not a kosher word. But this is the kind of pointer, or kind of signpost, that should wake us up and to realize there is a marriage, if you will, between the real creation and a message from our designer. This is the... And of course, the, as I say, Scientific American pointed the three-dimensional uh, constants that are shadows of a larger reality. 
And that's what the Bible has said all along. In Hebrews 11.3 and 1 Corinthians 15 and a lot of other places. Hebrews, the second verse in Hebrews 1, hath in these days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Who made the worlds? Jesus Christ. Indeed. 